All right, shalom, shalom, shalom. I need Yehuda Hayorwa or Shemi Yehuda Hayorwa. Then you know I'm Judah the Shooter or my name is Judah the Shooter. If this is your first time coming to my YouTube channel, let me go ahead and share my screen really quick. Right here, youtube.com slash Judah the Shooter. Ladies and gentlemen, everybody call me Judah the Shooter because I shoot out scripture, I shoot out information. And hey, look, I'm not going to cut no corners, which I'm going to be a straight shooter when it comes to this truth. Um, I do not confess to know everything, but hey, what I do know, I can share what I don't know. I just don't know. And of course, I'm not afraid to say, hey, I just don't know. Um, many of you may know that I'm the author of two books so far called The Unwritten Rules of Polygyny, book volume one. And book volume two, which of course you can get at propolybook.com, ladies and gents. Uh, I am now working on another book as well. And it's going to be dealing with uh, polygyny also uh, from a biblical aspect. So if you have been watching my videos um, on my YouTube channel, of course, then you're definitely going to love this book here that I have coming out next. It's going to be dealing with um, biblical polygyny. Is it a sin? That's going to be the topic that will be at hand. Now, I want to say something real quick uh, before we get started. So, um, about, let's see, over two years ago. Wow, it's been that long. Over two years ago, I did a documentary, well, a video called um, A Bishop Must Have One Wife. That was a question. And, um... That was something that I brought out, ladies and gents. Uh, you see, this was done October 21st, 2021. Um, if you know your history of me, that was um, really about some weeks before book one came out. Because this book was not released to November of 2021. So, um, kind of want to go back over that again, just a little bit. Um, Hopefully you watch that video too, because I go into a lot more detail that I will go in here. Um, but something I'm gonna do a little different that I did not do in that video. I did, but not to this extent. Um, so um, shout out to my bro, uh, my little bro Trail. Um, he was one of the first persons to, uh, I guess you could say, kind of bring it back to my attention the other day. Uh, I was at his house and uh, we were going over scripture, uh, building and things like that. And he had talked about uh, there are people out in the community that says that when you look at first, ten, matter of fact, let me just show you the scripture real quick for the newcomers, because it might be some newcomers here and I get that. OK, so first Timothy chapter three, so this verse here, it says a bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife. All right. Then, of course, when you go down to verse 12, it says that the deacons be the husband of one wife. And of course, when you go to, uh, no, I'm tripping, Titus chapter one of verse six, here it says, if any be blameless, the husband of one wife. All right, so um, he was asking me about that. And uh, he was saying that, you know, he's come across some people who he watch or maybe listen to us, something of that sort, where they teach that that is a mistranslation. And uh, it is to mean the, uh, the husband of, first wife and of course if you watched the video that i did back in 2021 you already know how i feel about that and my stands on it um so um dealing with that um you have the greek word mia of course and then the word the greek word heist now i may not talk about that in this one you'd have to watch once again let me go back you'd have to go to youtube.com says judah the shooter that's how you spell my name and here you will see why I actually deal with that, ladies and gents. And uh, you see right there, Mia. And you see right here on my screen here, look at this. It says one of first. So I talk about that um, in the documentary, um, in the video, of course. Um, so hopefully you all could um, get some understanding if you watch that. But it's something I kind of want to dive into on this one. Um, so um, I'm going to get right to it. Um, let's see anything else I want to mention before we go ahead and get started on. Um, no, we're gonna go ahead and just get on to it. So, ladies and gents, uh, I'll be reading from the uh, what you know as the Hebrew New Testament. 
I'm gonna pull it up on my screen and you'll be able to see it. All right, so um, let me go ahead and get started. All righty, let's go ahead and um, pull it on up. One second. All righty, so we have the Hebrew New Testament here. All right, we have Habarit Harasha. All right. Ha Hrasha, which is what you know as the uh oh I forgot right here. Sephore um Ha Hrasha, which is what you know as the books of the New Testament. All right. So uh we're gonna go right on to it. We're gonna go to um do I wanna do Titus first? Um we'll just go to Timothy first. All right. So Ladies and gentlemen, Hebrew is read from right to left and not left to right. All right. Now, one of the things I want to say um, first is uh, I do remember there was a time in my life where um, I really thought that First Timothy uh, three uh, meant um, first wife when it said uh, the husband of one wife. I used to really think that. Um, so I have been guilty of it in the past as well. You know what I'm saying? I've even heard people teach this and I'm like, oh man, you know what? That really does make sense. You know what I'm saying? So again, I remember what I thought it meant first wife or uh, I used to think that it mean um, um, he must have at least one wife. I remember that too. Um, and so forth, you know, um, you've been in the community, the Hebrew community a while, you've heard these teachings, but I used to think that, you know, um, then I learned how to read the text. And that kind of, I guess you could say in a bit, separate the men from the boys, if you will. Um, so that kind of really did something for me. It's, it's like when you see something and when you know you see it, you can't unsee it anymore. You know, you just can't, you know what I'm saying? So I remember, um, again, I thought it meant first wife. Now, of course, I know that uh, this doctrine uh, is false. Um, and that the concord is dealing with the Greek word heist or the word Mia, of course. Um, hopefully you've watched the other video, um, this in here, so you can understand where I came from with that. All right. So hopefully you all have seen that, ladies and gents. So we're going to go ahead and go into here. Okay. Ladies and gents. So he was read from right to left. We have Igoret. Igoret is an epistle, a letter writing polos so you know it's paul ha which is the roshona the first okay now this is very important here because even when you look at this word roshona it has the root word of rosh as you already know if you watch the other video rosh means head it means the top it means the first all right so when you see the word ha roshona that means the first all right the word roshon or the word roshona which has the root word of Rosh means first, ladies and gents. So this word here, Rishon or Rishona means first. If you say Ha Rishona, it means the first. All right. So it's one of the clues of knowing that, hey, I don't see that in 1 Timothy 3 and 2 or 1 Timothy 3 and 12, etc. So that can't mean the husband of one wife. Uh, or husband of the, uh, I'm sorry, the husband of the first wife. Because I don't see the word Hadarishona. But anyway, we have the word L, which is two. Then the next word, Timotheos. That's what you know as Timothy. Then we have the word Perek, which is a chapter, and Gimel, which is three. So this is First Timothy chapter three. So we have Igoret Polos Hadarishona, the first epistle of Paul, to Timothy chapter three it's what you get right there okay and this is what you know as the Hebrew New Testament ladies and gents okay and again as you know Hebrew is read from right to left and not left to right ladies and gents all right so I'll go ahead and read first Timothy three and two real quick and then we'll kind of go ahead and dive right on to it so we have the Hegmon Haeda Zaru, um, I'm sorry, Zarich Leot Bein Depi 
בעל אישה אחת. מושל, ברו חו, then we have this word, סנועה, סנועה, alright, then coming on down we have here, ונחמד, לאב ריאות, מכנין, or he. Next word we have ומבין. ללמדי, I'm sorry. ללמד, sorry about that. ולא אוהב. יין. Ooh, talking about a lover of wine. We'll deal with that though. Um, then we have here, ולא, בעל, ערוף. That's the word for fist. All right, a brawler. We'll deal with that later though. Then here, ולא, בוזיה, בזה, רע. Hopefully you all like that. You know, I read it slow for you all. All right? So, we're going to go ahead and dive into this, ladies and gents. And we're going to get the sense of the reading of what is being said here, ladies and gents. Because, once again, there was a doctrine that is being taught that when you read here in 1 Timothy 3... Uh, when it says here the husband of one wife they say that that is a mistranslation the um, translators were uh, pro monogamy and they were thinking in a uh, monogamous mindset and they put the word first I mean they put the word one wife instead of the word first wife now again this is coming from somebody who is pro polygyny not to be confused with polygamy This is coming from a person who obviously has more than one wife who wrote books on polygyny and I know better. All right. I know that it's a myth. All right. Now, if you're a person that disagrees with this, no offense, but um, yeah, if you can't read what I have here on the screen, then hey, no offense. Um, This just isn't your lane. This isn't your lane. Also, I want to pull something up, too, for you all as well. Hold on one second. Also, let me show you something. Let me show my screen here. Do you know what this says, guys? Do you know what this says? This is the same 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 2. So, ladies and gents, if you're the one that say, well, I don't deal with They call it Yiddish. Okay, well, right here. 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 2, ladies and gents. Oh, yeah. Now, for anybody who is... Um, uh, how can I put this? Uh, savvy with reading what they call the Lashawan Kordash. Right here. Those are the words we're going to focus on. Bala, Asha, Achad. All right? Or what you would say, Baal, and then the word Aisha, um, and the word Akad. That's what we're going to talk about. Or Akad. That's what we're going to talk about. So, this is the same 1 Timothy 3 and 2 that we're going to go over. All right? So, I'm not going to go fast, ladies and gents. But I will, I will take my time and I will help you to understand the sense of the reading, ladies and gents. So if you are a person who say, well, I don't deal with the, the style of Hebrew that you the shooter reads. Well, I just put it up on the screen. First Timothy chapter three and verse two. And you see, it says the same exact thing that I'm about to show you. The same thing. The only difference is, well, you all use a different sound, but that's another topic, though. Uh, you know, Barbara Bara Alahayam Ab Hashaman Wa Atha Rataza dialect. But the meanings don't change. That does not change. Okay. If I said Aleph Bait, you would just say Ah and the Ba. All right. So, that being said, let's go ahead and pull it back up, ladies and gents. And again, look. Um, This is what it is. 
this is what it is you know what i'm saying so we're gonna go ahead and deal with it ladies and gents so once again we're in first timothy chapter three and verse two so the first word here is the hegmon and this means and the gamon that word is what you also know as a cardinal a cardinal is another word for like an arch bishop all right that is the person who is the superintendent that is the person who is the overseer all right that is the head honcho the one that is in charge so that word is also looked as cardinal like a cardinal bird if you will if you just look up maybe you can just type in on google define cardinal and you might see the word archbishop it's another word for bishop all right all right like the word picuda all right which and of course if you watch the doc i mean though i keep saying documentary of uh, the video that i did on it um once again ladies and gents let me go back this video here I talk about it all right i'll talk about it okay so um we have here the hegemon and the bishop haeda of the congregation or what you know as the assembly zaru zaru that's the word for must or need so right here this here is a must all right a must got that so that being said we're going to keep on read ladies and gentlemen so once again we have here the hegemon and the bishop haeda must and here zarich zarich all right and a bishop of a congregation all right now next thing you know we're going to go to the next part here we have liot Be'in dafi that means what he must be without blemish all right that means what you can't be able to point the blame at him all right when his name gets brought up you're not gonna say what johnny that bishop the crackhead him yeah he was just selling crack down the street doing x y and z that's y'all bishop him okay so once again we have here the hegemon and the bishop haida of the assembly zarich must be what liot the in defeat he must be without blemish but then it goes on to use these words here. Baal Isha Echat. That's the same three words. Let me show you real quick. Let me show my screen. Let me go back. Uh, where's the screen? Share all at once. Here we go. New share. For you Lashawan Kadash people, here it is right here. Baal Isha Echat. All right. The same exact three words that i have highlighted here so this says baal baal is what like the owner the master of the lord of the husband all right the controller but look at this isha is the word for wife but this here word echat, meaning what the husband of one wife that there is a, com a qualification if you want to be an overseer the husband of one wife not the first wife because remember if it was said the first wife it would have had here harishona and we'll deal with that shortly though but the word harishona is not there what is there but all is shah echat so first timothy three and two did not say anything about the husband of the first wife at all says the husband of one wife not first wife this says one wife so when they say all the translators had a monogamous mindset and it had monogamy on their minds and uh it's incorrect because it literally says the husband of the first wife that's what it's supposed to say if you go into the text that's a lie that's a myth they ain't, ain't had nothing to do with that at all nothing to do with that it literally says the husband of one wife that's literally what it says so it's a myth ladies and gentlemen 
Moshel, Berucho, Zonia, Zania. That means what? That this person must be temperate in his spirit, meaning what? He has to have self control, ladies and gentlemen. Self control. In this word here, the Nechmad, this means a person is to be nice. A person should be what? Respectable. All right. So this person is a respectable person. All right. Respectable person. And again, that makes sense. You know, you want a person that is like that to what? Be respectable. Okay. Be respectable. Again, this doctrine has to stop, ladies and gentlemen. It has to stop. It really does. Next part we here we have Lebriot Machnim or Kim. I'm reading this slow for you all, ladies and gentlemen. That's basically saying what? For hospitality of gainful host. So that person must have good hospitality as the host, in other words. The person that is in the congregation have great hospitality. Why? Because you don't want nobody coming into your congregation and they don't feel welcome. Again, this here that I'm reading is dealing with a bishop that is specifically over a congregation and they desire the office or the job to become an oversight or overseer, a governor in their church. One who watches over, one who inspects. He's the inspector. He watches over. That's who this is talking about. Not you brothers, if you teaching online and you a YouTube teacher or you might go out in the street. I'm not talking about you. Those that are specifically over what, it, what the text said. Ha'eda. Ha'eda. A congregation. All right. That's who I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen. Then we have here. Ome. I'm sorry. Umeven. Umeven. All right. Le Lame. So that is a person that is what? That a person that is able to teach. He's still able to teach. But remember, we're talking, this person here is a bishop, an overseer over a congregation, though. That's what we're talking about. All right. Hopefully you all understand this. So the next one we have here is um Bello Ohave Yayan. So in other words, and not a lover of yayin, wine. He can't be a drunk. It doesn't say that he can't drink wine, all right? But that phrase is dealing with a lover of wine, of course. And here, what else he can't be? Balo, meaning, and neither can he be what? Baal, that Baal means master, lord as well. But this here is going to something else though, not a husband, but a master of what? Egrof. That's talking about a master of fists. All right. A person that is, uh, and, and believe it or not, this word here, um, Egrof, can be used for the word for boxer as well. So when a person is a master of fists or what you would call today uh, a master of fighting, this is what you call a person who is always wanting to fight because they're good at it. They're ready to throw hands. At any given moment, they just ready to pop, 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 pop. All right? Today, you will call him a boxer, a professional fighter, if you will. You know what I'm saying? But that word there that I have highlighted is the word, it's the Hebrew word for fist. All right? It's for fist. All right? And this is thought to be a brawler. All right? So that's what that's actually speaking about. It's going to an actual brawler. You can't be a person that you getting your feelings, you ready to fight. That don't fit no good characteristic of no bishop at all, all right? So you can't be a brawler. You can't be a lover of wine. You have to be able to teach. You have to be a hospitality uh, as gainful host. You have to be temperate in your spirit and you have to be the husband of one wife. You have to be without blemish, meaning without blame. If you wanna be a bishop of a congregation, you have to be that. You have to be that. So the next word here, what else you can't be? Valo, meaning it neither. Vo, zea, beza, ra. 
What does that mean, ladies and gentlemen? And not greedy to follow evil. But that word there is greed. You can't be greedy. So uh, meaning in it for the money. You can't be a person that's always looking for a lucrative opportunity. All right. The next scheme. Oh, let me get over on this congregation. And oh, yeah, let me go ahead and scam the church. You can't be that type of person. And the Bible is warning that of that. All right. You can't do that, ladies and gents. All right. Now we're in First Timothy 3 and 12. It says, Ha Shemashi. All right. Ha Shemashi. It's funny because um, I believe I said this in the last video too. The word uh, a Shemesh is like the word for sun, like a sun outside, if you will. Um, matter of fact, before I do, um, Let's go ahead. Uh, yeah, you call Echad. Here we go again. Baal Isha Echad. Look at that. Baal Isha Echad. Uminachalim Betov. The word et. At what? Benahim. Oh, you know how I like that? Benahim. Baet Betatehim. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, it says here, the first words here that I want to deal with, Ha Shemashim Yeyu, and let the attendance be, attendance, not like you go, oh, I got perfect attendance at school, the attendance, that's with um, what you call deacons. So, I want to pause here. So this is the attendance or a server, like a waiter. Like you go to a restaurant, you have a waiter, one who is an helper, one who helps. All right. Those are deacons. That's the Hebraic thought of a deacon. Not today. You might see deacons in the pulpit teaching deacons standing up in the congregation, teaching the congregation. That is not a biblical deacon. All right. Not from the Hebraic thought. The actual language, the text. Now, you may have a, well, right here in this definition, well, right here in the Hebrew text, it ain't saying that at all. So, again, this is a waiter, one who helps, um, like a server, like you serve tables. You know what I'm saying? These are those, again, who like who, who serve tables. They would they assist with things, not to be confused with the modern meaning of a deacon who was uh, uh, like a teacher. Because That's a modern meaning. You can look it up and see it in modern uh, definitions you can see that but that's not the biblical deacon though you know what i'm saying although it is accepted today as a deacon is a teacher he can teach but no deacon from a biblical hebraic thought pattern is a person who is a waiter all right um so again if you're a street teacher this got nothing to do with you or a youtube teacher or a social media teacher but understand that if you go by that from a Hebraic standpoint or Hebraic thought pattern you would be a server or a helper you know what I'm saying um uh, and a job of this person may be um I mean you'd be a waiter like waiting tables maybe help with the poor you know what I'm saying uh something of that sort maybe um um somebody is uh devoted to serving or uh, looking over charity of the church if you will that would be that you know what i'm saying they have the superintendents as well like a a, a a bishop is but they're the superintendents or the overseers over things of that sort that i just got done describing you know what i'm saying so such as again waiting tables being a server serving you know what i'm saying some in the religious church have now moved that title to go as far as teaching today you know what I'm saying? They would suggest that, however, this, this again, has nothing to do. Um, I mean, it, it, um, what I'm about to say, however, there's nothing, uh, there's nothing in the holy manuscripts that would suggest that they were actual teachers, although you can find it in some definitions today. You can definitely find that. Even in the concordance, I believe you can find that. But again, that's more of a modern thought pattern, though. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It could be fine in that, but you know, that theory, you know, I've never saw it being backed up via scripture. You know what I'm saying? So I just had to mention that. All right. So, 
Uh, next thing you know, we have call. You know how y'all say kalal. <laughs> Uh, echad. So call means all. Echad means is one. This is what you know is everyone, if you will. All right. So 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 far we have let everyone of the deacons be. Is what we got so far. So let every one of the deacons be. So let everyone or all of the attendants be what? Oh yeah, because this is. Sorry, let be as well. So we have let every one of the deacons be, or let all the deacons be what? Watch this. Baal, the owner of the husband, Isha, which is wife, wife, Echad, one. So let every one of the deacons be the husband of one wife. Once again, it says nothing about first wife at all. Nothing of that sort. Nothing of that sort. Let all of them be the husbands of one wife. One wife. It don't say uh, first wife at all. It has nothing to do with that, ladies and gents. Hold on, I got a text message. Hold on. Yeah, but while I'm doing that, um, yeah, it's talking about monogamy. Monogamy. Monogamy only. That's what it's talking about, ladies and gents. All right? Then we have here, um nachalim. Um nachalim, and then the word betol. Et benehim. What is that, ladies and gentlemen? And ruling well, or ruling good. All right, ruling good. Um, um, their children, if you will. I almost had a tongue twist. Um, so in other words, this is a person whose household is in order. Their children and their and their own houses are in order. All right. That's what it's getting at. All right. So uh anything else I want to mention on that? Uh yeah, yeah, I'm mean, the children. Then we have here by et by Tehem. That's dealing with uh in their own houses. So this is what you have your um your household in order so in other words uh dealing with that ladies and gents when we look here they're commanded to be monogamous all right so when we read this passage it's just saying that these these men who want to be an attendant a server you want to be a superintendent over things of that sort they have to be ruling their children and their how on their own houses as well their households so they better be a man that has their household in order and well ran. All right. So it just can't be no anybody to just say, oh, well, you know, I'm going to go ahead and wait here, be a superintendent over that man. Your mindset might be on other things such as, hey, such as the poor people out there and X, Y and Z. You got to be a superintendent over that. How you not going to have time to have more than one wife? Logically, it makes sense. And this is coming from a person who is pro poly. Look, brother, if you asking it, so are you trying to say we in sin, Ark? Where is that in the law? Brother, I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is you're going against the scripture right here. First Timothy 3 and 2, First Timothy 3 and 12. I can say that you're not qualified to be a bishop or a deacon. I can for sure say that. I'm not accusing you of breaking the Torah or being a sinner but what i am saying is you are going against what the scriptures say i can say that and this is coming from a person who have five wives and courting a wife now i'm pro poly as they get but i i can't act like i don't see something that i do see i can't act like i don't see that i can't act like i don't see that but again, it's not just uh, subjected to a person having more than I mean, only one wife, but you gotta have your household in order. You gotta have your household in order. Your household ain't in order, bro. You not fit to do this. At least not right now. Come back next year. But if you got more than one wife, you're just not qualified, even if you desire that office. You're just not qualified to do it. And look, that's just what it is. Look, the, the books say what the books say. I don't even know why this is even a problem. Why would this even be an issue? Like, I, like it's, it's silly to me. 
Igorette Pelos L Titos Perek Aleph Aleph. So in other words, the pistol or the letter Pelos or Paul. So in other words, what well, you know as Paul's hold on, wait, Paul's epistle or his letter L Titos to Timothy. I'm sorry, to Titus. Perek, which is chapter one. So this is Titus chapter one, ladies and gents. Titus chapter one, and we'll look at verse six. Titus one and six. So we have Im Yemase Ish Tom Uva Al Isha Echad. There it is again. By Yeshlo Banin Mea Menin. We are the faith, baby. The in Alehim. Coming down, we have Ta'anat Peri Zut. The Anam So Rarim. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what do we have here? All right. So, in now, look, when we look at the context here, remember, according to verse four, um, Remember, even right here, two Titus by name, Ha Amiti. All right. Be Emuna Echat Chasid. So, two Titus, my own son, after the same faith. All right. Grace. That's when he was greeting him, if you will. So, remember, he wanted him to appoint or establish elders. In every city, in every city, I need you to understand this. He told Titus, who was like a son to him, I need you to set up um, elders in every city. And he told him the type of elders that he needed to be in these churches, in these congregations. And he, get, he told him who exactly to look for. What are the characteristics that you need to look for? For a person to be an elder over a congregation, a bishop, an overseer over a congregation. Once again, if you have not watched the video here, because I go into more detail than when I'm going into this video, I warned you all, watch this video. Watch that video. All right. A bishop must have one wife. That's a question. And you will say I go into more detail, whole lot more detail. All right. But anyway, long story short. He want to um, have them to be set over the congregation. All right. So the first thing he does here when dealing with here, Im Yemate, Ish, Tom. What do we have here, ladies and gentlemen? What is that? Why are you Hebrew speakers out there? What do you tell them? Look at this. Oh, no, wait. Where's my? Oh, there we go. He's telling you here, if any if anyone is found or any man is found, what? Blameless, innocent, a man who is innocent. Go find me an innocent man. In other words, his name ain't brought up on no charges of being guilty of something, right? This man here. So, ladies and gentlemen, understand that he's telling him who to go and find who he wants to go and find if anyone is found blameless or if he find this innocent this blameless man in other words so when titus was told by paul to find a bishop he was told to find one among the people who was deemed as blameless or innocent no one can point the finger at him so if he finds an innocent man in other words that's what he's saying there. If you find, if you if you go amongst them and you find this innocent man, look at this. And not just that, and Baal, the owner, Isha, wife, Echad. So not only he told him to go and find a man that, that can nobody say nothing bad about, point the finger about, but also he had to be monogamous. The husband of one wife. He had to be that, ladies and gentlemen. He had to be the husband of one wife. He didn't say the husband of the first wife. Let me pull this up for you. Look, watch this. We're going to go to translation for 
Oh wait, I'm showing my screen. I'm tripping. Hold on, wait. Okay, look, look at this. And the husband and one wife. Look at this. We're gonna copy this and let's paste it. Look at this. And the husband. So well, you know how they got it backwards. Take off the word and. Right. This is the word for one. Let me take that off. And this is the word for. This is the word by all, which is husband, and it's the word for wife. Literally, the word first is not there. If it was first, it would be this. Ha. Re. Oh, yeah. Oh, hold up. Wait. Let me go back. Father was shown now. First. Look at this. Where are you at? H, this is fire. Uh, we go, ha. Huh? The first woman or the first wife. That's what it would say, ladies and gents. The first woman. There's the word for Ishad. It didn't say that right here, though. It didn't say that. If you go back and rewind the video, it never said that in either video. The word Rishona is not there. Or Rishon is not there, ladies and gents. That doctrine is false. It has nothing to do with, again, saying, oh, well, the translators got it wrong. No. Not at all. This elder of this bishop was to be the husband of only one wife. He was to be monogamous. He was to be blameless, innocent. There was no mistranslation of any kind, guys. The Greek text got it right. When you watch this video, you will see that. The Greek text got it right. I even show how y'all take the concordance out of context in that video. The Greek text got it right. The Hebrew translation got it right. The English translation, uh, translation the King James Version of the Bible, got it right. This does not say at least one wife or the husband of his first wife. Guys, this was a qualification for bishops and deacons. Over specific ha'eda, what we know as a congregation, the congregation. And it's not saying that if you do this, you are breaking the law once again, but it is saying that if you are just, I mean, it, it, it is saying that, look, you're just not qualified to be a bishop or a deacon if you want poly, if you poly. If you desire that office, hey, there's nothing wrong with that. The Bible says you desire the good work. That's very good. But guess what? There are qualifications if you want to be that. And being monogamous is one of them. You could be other things in the church. You could be a teacher. You just can't be an overseer or a helper of the congregation. You just can't be those things. And if you're doing those things, guess what? That's who you are. Well, I don't want to call myself this. I don't want to call myself that. All right, well, look, bro. That's your business. That's your, that's your issue. But I'm telling you, if you taking on that job and you desired it, you got qualifications. You got qualifications. Hold on one second. Hold on. I'm going to call you back. I'm doing a video. So look, you got qualifications and that's just what it is. That's just what it is. So again, I'm not saying that you're breaking Torah, but what I am saying is if you desire the office or the job of a bishop, you're commanded to have one wife. But I also go to show you this though, that polygyny had to be going on because if he's saying, hey, Titus, go find elders in every city, not some city, but every city. When you read Titus 1, 4 on down, 4 through 6, go find them in every city, but find me one that's innocent and find me one that's the husband of one wife. That lets you know polygyny had to be going on because if, Polygyny was already established for you anti poly people, people. If polygyny was already established when Christ came on the scene, you know, after he died, then if monogamy was the standard, then there would be no need for Paul to go and command a bishop or a deacon over the all these cities to only have one wife if it was already the standard. If if monogamy was the standard, it would be no need for him to mention that. 
a man should have more than one wife. I mean, a man can't have more than one wife at all. At that point, it would make sense to say something like the husband of, well, not even then the husband of his first wife. It wouldn't even make sense to say that then because then at that point, well, you're the husband of first wife, but I'm going to get me a second one. No. So the fact that he goes on record to say the amount of number of wives in which a bishop or a deacon must have, that lets you know that people have to been doing polygyny, have to been a common thing. Nobody in, in what we call the New Testament argues over the concept of polygyny. And that's what I'm going to be proving in my book. And what I'm talking about now, this would be in my book as well. So, and you will see another, a lot of reasons why I say that, but yes, hey, look, if you want to be a bishop or a deacon, there's nothing wrong with that. Those are great uh, offices to have, but make no mistake about it. It says, Uva al isha echad. You must be the husband of one wife. Straight up. It don't mean have at least one wife or, or any other thing, but being monogamous. That's all that that means. Straight up. Vayesh lo banim. That word uh, and, and then this word yesh can mean a substance or something that you have, have, or have. Remember this word too, because when you all read my book, I talk about this word yesh. All right. Yesh is going to be very important. I talk about that word yesh a lot. All right. That word can also be dealing with wealth as well. All right. But anyway, but in this context here, and having his children, look at this, me, I, meni, of the faith, in other words. All right, so in other words, or believers, this means what, guys? That he has his children, all right? He had to have children who are believers, who are, who are of the faith, all right? They have to be of the faith, all right? Then we have here, the aim meaning and neither or and not but we got to get the context i lay him so and not any of them so neither one of them is re, um, when he's referring to his children so they, they have to uh, he have to have his children basically in order they got to be of the faith but it would have said about none of uh, none of the children guys um yeah don't want to say that yeah yeah yes yeah, the best way to explain that um so i hope you all are really listening and understanding what i'm bringing out guys because believe it or not, a lot of people is not going to mention what I'm talking about, guys. They're going to act like they don't see this and they're going to continue to teach that nasty doctrine. So it goes on to say, and uh, not any of them, ta and not. That's dealing with uh, accusation or accused. All right. So, uh, when it comes to the children, none of them are accused. Look at this. Peri zut. Peri zut. That's uh, dealing with immoral. Such as um, they're not out here reckless on lewd behavior, messed up behavior. They're not out here loose. All right. They're not out here getting drunk, out doing drugs. They're just uncontrollable, just bad behavior. All right, they're not out there on that. So his children again has to be in order. All right, gotta be in order. We uh, um, we he told him to go find a man that's innocent. He gotta be the husband of one wife. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he gotta have his children that are believers, and they can't out here be um causing chaos. I believe the King James version used the word for riot. Don't quote me on that. I think is it riot? Yeah, I think it's riot. So. They can't be out there on that. All right. Then here, that many and and nam su rarim. So here, the enam so rarim. What is that? And they can't be rebellious. In other words, they can't be um yeah, rebellious, but I'm looking for more so of like they can't be out here be corrupt, uncontrollable, dishonest, out here scheming. Or whatnot. They can't be out there on that. But when we look here, guys, but all is echat, that's the husband and one wife. So all three of these passages, 1 Timothy 3 and 2, 1 Timothy 3 and 12, Titus 1 and 6 are all speaking on monogamy, as in a bishop of a congregation is to have only but one wife. These three scriptures does not suggest that 
he had to be um he had to um still be with his first wife it's not saying um at least one wife it's not saying first wife it's only saying that he must live a monogamous lifestyle ladies and gentlemen all three of them you see this one husband and one wife right and going down let's see uh ch -ch 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 -ch. Where we at? Here we go. How do we show now? First Timothy 3. When we look here, Be'al Isha Echat. Let's highlight that real quick. Look at what it says here. Let me take that out. Oh, hold on, wait. Why well, I want to copy and paste? Hold on. Ladies and gentlemen, do we got a problem here? I guess it won't copy and paste. Hmm. Well, I want to do it. Hold on. Let's. Hold on. I guess I'll just have to uh, do it on my own. Do it manually. The all husband Isha wife hus husband and wife um, and then the word Echat. I mean, it has and, but it's husband of one wife. We know a damn show don't say no damn first. <laughs> it don't say no first. All right. So that being said, when you scroll all the way down to verse 12, uh, here we go. Let's see if it let me highlight this and paste this one. Let's see. Man, I don't know why it's doing that. We're acting up. Let's hit paste. Ah, right, there we go. One husband and wife. Monogamy. Monogamy. That's what it's that's what it's saying there, ladies and gents. That's what this is saying. This is not talking about no husband of no uh no husband of no first wife. All three passages say that. That is what the uh that's what it said in the King James Bible. That's what it says in the Greek text. That's what it said in the Hebrew text. They're all correct. This has nothing to do with no translators having no monogamous mindset. They have monogamy on their mind. They were anti-poly. So they decided to put one wife instead of first wife in English. No, it doesn't say that. It doesn't even imply that. At all. So as we see right here, the husband of one wife. Just like you read in the Greek, same thing, guys. You read the same thing. And then, um, do I even want to share this? Um, so I just make you all go and read the, um, I mean, I read, but watch the video. You know what? I may just go ahead and do it. Hold on. Let me pull it back up. One second. Let me hit, um, uh, resume share. Hold on. Let's see. New share. Come on, screen. Oh, there we go. Right here. So, one thing I will show, guys. Um, let me uh, scoot this over. When you go to 1 Timothy. Where we at? Where we at? Where we at? 1 Timothy chapter 3. Let me, um, here we go. It says, a bishop then must be blameless the husband of one wife. When you look at this word wife, the word heist, right? Again, you see this word mia, it comes from this word here. And when you scroll down, look at this, one. That's what it means, guys. Primary numeral one. Look, so when you go here, I'm just giving you a little bit now. When you click on this word one, ladies and gents, uh, when you see one of first, this word heist, Amia, can mean first. But guess when it means first? It tell you right here. Every time is this word heist, Amia, is used for first, it's for these verses. Every time is used for the word agree, which is one time, it's for this verse. But every time this word is used for one, as in singular, it's for these verses. Why won't they tell y'all that? 
And look what's right here. 1 Timothy 3 and 2, 1 Timothy 3 and 12, and Titus 1 and 6. That's when it's used for the word one. That's when it means one. That's when it means literal numeral value of one. Ladies and gents, they are commanded to have one wife. When you go to 1 Timothy 3 and 12, look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Again, these are your qualifications. One wife. Every time it's used for the word one, it's in these verses. Every time it's used for first, it's in that verse. There's no mistranslation. And when it's used for agree, it's in that verse. So now we know according to here, it's for the numeral value of one. Titus chapter one and verse six. Here, it says, uh, verse one, to Titus, my own son, after the common faith, grace and mercy and peace, from God the Father and the Lord Yeshua HaMashiach, or what they call Jesus the Christ, our Savior. But this cause being this reason, left I thee in Crete, like I left you on the island of Crete, that you shall set in order the things that are wanting or lacking and ordain, appoint, or establish, set up. What elders, which we learn later in verse 7, those elders were bishops. And what in every city, not some cities, but every city, as I what? as I appointed to you. And look at what he says. If any be blameless or innocent, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of riot. Yeah, it is say riot right there. Unruly, remember uncontrolled, I was telling you earlier. For bishop then must be blameless as the steward. What's the steward? Look at this, guys. It's the house distributor. This is a manager. He runs everything. All right, it is right there. Manager of a household, household affairs. Look at this, the superintendent. So here it is, as the steward of God, not self-will, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not given to filthy lucre, but a love of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, and temperate, self-control, holding fast or standing firm on what? The faithful word as he had been taught, that he might be able by sound doctrine, which is the right teachings, both to exhort, and to convince who? Those naysayers. See that? So they were commanded to be monogamous. One man, one woman, ladies and gents. And this is coming from a person who is pro-poly as they come. But I can't act like I don't see it. Truth is truth. And if you're a bishop, an elder over your congregation, holding that title, then hey, you must fit all the qualifications. If not, bro, look, I'm not saying you're going against Torah, but I am saying is you're going against uh what the Bible says about being a bishop or a deacon. I can say that. I can definitely say that. And hey, maybe you just got a Paul a problem with Paul is saying, and that's a whole other topic. But if you do, then that's just on you. I ain't gonna argue that. But hey, if you believe and subscribe to First Timothy and Titus, that's just what it is. If not, then hey, I guess I'll apply to you then. You know what I'm saying? So, but hopefully you do. But hey, if you want to get the full understanding, watch this video. A bishop must have one wife. It's on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Judah the Shooter. My books can be found at propolybook.com, ladies and gents. Propolybook.com. Why? Because I'm pro poly and it's a book. So propolybook.com, you can find book one and book two. I got a bundle deal on there now as well. Limited time bundle deal, you get both books. I also have Afterpay to where you can um, make payments on the books and you can receive your product up front. All right, and you can make payments on it. So there's no excuse, you know what I'm saying? So uh, that's just what it is. So, hey, look, I'm pro poly as it gets, but I can't act like, I don't see that. You know what I'm saying? What you just learned will be in my book that's dealing with uh, biblical uh, biblical felicity being a sin. It will be in there. Um, but I will literally destroy the, the false doctrine in the anti-poly community when they say, oh, you can't have more than one wife. We're going over every scripture, every reason why they say, oh, you can't do that. Even when they talk about all oh, the laws of the land. Read chapter nine and chapter 10 of this book right here tell you how to deal with that as well you know what i'm saying um getting, uh, dealing with legal protection if that's something you decide you want to do as well so uh but yeah look hey i'm judah the shooter i need yehuda hayora both for you all 
enjoyed the lesson. That being said, Lehitoriot, see you later. Shalom and Shalom, meaning in peace. <laughs>